Welcome to this introduction to Intuity's latest release, Intuity 16. I'm Pete Bartz, a systems engineer for Intuity. Intuity 16 adds significant features to further automate network management and to broaden and deepen your insight across even the largest networks. Today I'd like to demonstrate some of the major features, including a fully integrated web-driven configuration management system, enhanced topology maps that improve usability and provide more focus and deeper visibility into your network, and finally, a new seamless integration with ServiceNow to bring real-time network insight and a complete view of service delivery across ServiceNow business service management environments. In addition to these features, Intuity 16 delivers additional enhancements, including cloud certification for Intuity servers to run in the cloud, and deliver the high performance and efficiency that's required for on-premise installations. Event management usability enhancements providing more efficient management of the EMS configuration. Enhanced administration including configuration-driven unattended installation. New and enhanced capacity planning and trend reports. And even more. So with that, let's get started. Let's begin with the new configuration management. In previous versions of Intuity, we focused on monitoring device configurations and identifying and alerting on any changes. This functionality is still in place, but in Intuity 16, we've added a new web-driven configuration management module, enabling users to automatically push configurations to thousands of devices and ports within single and multi-server environments. This is part of the standard product, and the increased automation improves operational efficiency by reducing the amount of time spent performing repetitive tasks and improving the accuracy of network information by reducing the opportunity for user error. Intuity Configuration Management allows configuration of tasks that are made up of individually defined steps through which users can set device configurations. For example, you can set a port to admin down, set a device community string, or perform more complex tasks. We include a set of example tasks and steps that you can leverage and also use as templates to develop your own configurations. Depending on their setup, tasks can be run dynamically from context menus and scheduled. They can be applied to one or multiple objects regardless of the Intuity server and can also be run by selecting a view. It's fully integrated so that you can track task delivery through events and incidents the audit log, as well as the configuration management history page. Let me show you a few examples on how this new integrated functionality can be effectively leveraged. Let's start with a straightforward device change. In my network, I've got a number of devices where I need to update the system contact configuration. The process in my company limits the changes that can be made during the day, so I'll schedule this change to run after business hours. Let's take a look at the steps that I use to set this up. From the administration menu, I can look at all the configuration management options. I can see the tasks, I can see any steps, and I can see any schedules that I've set up. In addition, I can look at the history of any jobs that have run along with their status. If I need to, I can drill into any of the details of a job and look at the specific details for devices or ports and their configuration changes. Let's look at the step that I used to set the contact details. I've set the context of this step to run at a device level. I could also select a port for port-based tasks, or actually I could set none if my task includes both devices and ports. The script is written using a combination of expect level logic and the industry standard Java-derived Groovy scripting language. I'm entering configuration mode here, and you can see that I'm setting the SNMP server contact details here. In addition, I'm passing a parameter to the script because I'd like to set the contact details when I run the job. This is a fairly simple example, but it shows the flexibility of the scripting engine. Next, let's look at the task that I used to create the change. A task contains all of the instructions required to complete a designated configuration change. I've set the context to be at the device level, and I've included all the steps including logging onto the device, 
setting the system contact, and logging out. The system contact parameter is also defined, along with its data type and any default values. The Advanced tab lets me set additional parameters in my task, including raising events, performing additional filtering, and adding the task to context menus. Since I need this to run outside of business hours, I set up a schedule for the task. Let's look at what I did. From the Schedule menu, let's create a brand new schedule. Let's associate the schedule with a task. Let's add a description. We'll select the servers, and this can run against all of my Intuity servers. Define a view, and in my case, I'm going to be running this against my Brazil view. And let's select all the devices. Let's create a new schedule and actually schedule this to run after hours. The parameter is where I can actually set the contact information that will be added to the configuration. Now we'll wait for this to run. After the job completes, we can look at the details. In this case, we see that the task ran successfully and each of the targets were changed. If we drill into a target, we can see the specific details for each of the changes. Next let's, look, next, let's look at what Intuity sees as a result of this configuration change. I've created a custom dashboard highlighting the Brazil devices and their inventory. You can see here that the contact details have been updated. And we can also see that there's a number of incidents that actually tell us about the configuration change. The config management job tells us that this configuration job actually ran successfully. And we can also see some Cisco configuration incidents where if I drill into those and show the details, you can actually see that the configurations have been changed, that I've logged into the device to make the config, and that the device that actually made the configuration was my Intuity server. Let's take a look at another example. In this case, I recently installed a new switch for one of my customers, and I'd like to activate service on a number of the ports using the customer's default configuration. From the Explorer menu, I can highlight the ports that I'd like to change and use a context menu to initiate the configuration change. Let's configure the access ports for Acme Studios. Let's confirm the execution of this task. We can see that the default port description and VLAN have already been set up in my task to the correct values. So let's click OK and run this job. After the job completes, Intuity will recognize the updated descriptions and VLANs, and I can also log into the switch from the Intuity Remote Terminal and verify the new configuration. Let's look at another use case where the new configuration management can help me quickly address a possible security issue. In my data center, I have a process where ports are normally shut down unless there's a change order to add service. Someone made a change and accidentally turned up a port that was connected to an older, unpatched server. When the port came up, Intuity detected a high level of utilization and opened up an incident. In looking at the incident, I can see that the port was recently turned up, and given that there's no customer-specific port description, I can see that this was done in error. Using the configuration management system, I can quickly shut this port down directly from the event viewer. In a matter of seconds, the configuration job has shut this port down, as I can see right here. The most common use case for a configuration management system is to push configurations out to devices. The flexibility of this feature in Intuity Let's me go a step further and actually use a task to query a device. As my final example, let's look at one application where this can be used. I'd like to quickly query a device to see its OSPF neighbors. 
Now I have a task set up for this that includes a step to run the console command show IP OSPF neighbor. I can easily run this task using a context menu and I can very quickly display the results.